All right, guys. So my stories this week were heavily influenced by the release of a movie on Hulu, a re-release of a movie on Hulu called Urban Legend. Oh, I just watched that Sunday. <laughs> it's such a good movie. It's just, it takes you back. Yes. So I was heavily influenced to search for some possible beginnings of urban legends in my stories today. So I have a couple that I want to share. Whether these actually happened, I don't know. They are urban legends. You may even have heard a different version of them. But here's the thing. Both of these are going to make you probably think twice before going and doing something. Oh, excited. So the first one here, why you should always lock your door at night. Frick, bro. So one night, there was this kid who stayed home while his parents went out to eat. He had a paper that was due that night. Obviously, he worked on the paper a little bit. Then he started playing games on his computer. But he had like these nice like noise-canceling headphones. And he sat there all night just playing on his computer. Around 11 o'clock, his parents get home and he takes his headphones off. And his mom yells up to him, what happened down here? Confused, he gets up from his desk, he heads downstairs, and immediately he sees what, what she's talking about. There are muddy footprints in the house. So the family... Vile human. <laughs> for real, take your goddamn shoes off. <laughs> they realize that the footprints are only going in. So there's someone in the house. The family runs into the garage, calls 911. The police show up at their house and search the place and find no one. But they did find something that was terrifying. They bring the family up to the boy's bedroom where he had been playing on his computer all night with his door open. And right next to the door in a Sharpie is written, my log, 847, I see you. 853, you forgot to lock the back door. 859, you seem focused. 924, turn around. 947, look at me. 1015, look at me. 1037, look at me. 1049, look at me. For almost two hours, someone had been watching him on his computer until just when his parents got home. And that's why you should always lock your door at night. Well, he just stayed there the whole time? I Did imagine he, he was walking around and just, oh, I don't know if he left or they saw the footprints leave after they came, but the footprints were still there when the parents got home. You leave his shoes? Oh, yeah, for real. No know. shoes? No shoes. No no sign besides the... He hand stood and walked out. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, if cool. you really want to mess with somebody. Even more terrifying. <laughs> no, he obviously had to have stopped, taken his shoes off, carried his shoes out. That's true. That's an easier way. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in, realizes he's tracking mud into the house, takes his shoes off right there, tosses them outside, and then walks up and starts... Creeping on somebody. Makes sense. That's what makes sense in my mind. So do we get context? Like, did this actually happen? Um, allegedly, that was a police report. And that log is what was in the police report. Ugh. I don't know if that actually happened. I tried to Google as much as I could for a police report. I couldn't find it. Sean's like, police. Policereport.com. Police report <laughs> log, watching kid. Yeah. And I was like, this is kind of yeah. like freaking out my uh, You're on uh, seven list history. now. <laughs> <laughs> Had to stop there. All right, that's my first urban legend. Ye. My second one, why you shouldn't go camping alone. So this happened to a 22-year-old girl who liked hiking and camping by herself. She's also an avid photographer, and she liked to uh, take pictures of the wildlife, of the outdoors, and had been told by several of her friends of a really good spot where they had seen deer, badgers, lots of different birds. So she decides to head out there one day. She drives until she can't drive anymore. And that's where she gets out of the car and starts hiking out into the woods. She grabs, obviously grabbed her equipment, her camera gear, her tent, 
heads out into the woods about 30 minutes or so, stumbles across a badger den. And she's like, oh, sweet. I will set up my camera equipment here. She sets up her gear. She has a motion sensor detector like with her as well. So she is an avid photographer. (laughs) So that when the badgers come out, it will turn on the camera and she'll be able to catch uh, footage of it. So she sets it all up. And then a short ways away from where she set up the gear, she sets up tent or like her uh, camp uh, so that she doesn't bother any of the animals to, as to like not the, let as to make them not want to come out of their den. And she seems like she's off of the uh, main trail, doesn't seem too concerned. So she goes to sleep that night. She wakes up that next morning and heads over to her camera gear. She noticed what looks like prints outside the uh, badger den. And so she's like, oh, sweet. For sure, I caught some footage. She goes over to the camera, and the camera's dead. She had hooked up a battery to it as well. But for some reason, the battery is unplugged. She's starting to be like, I don't know what could have caused this. Maybe I forgot to plug it in. But she uh, grabs all of her gear goes and packs up her uh, camp and decides to take everything back to her car so that she can uh, recharge the camera up there and see what footage she got. She plugs it back in, in the car, and a few minutes later, it pops on, pulls up the uh, recent photos, and the first one is a video. Timestamp 2.30 a.m. And it had flipped on, and nothing was caught on camera. It was about 20 seconds of just filming the den. Nothing there. And then she flips to the next picture, and it's her tent. She flips to the next picture. It's her sleeping in her tent. And the next 30 photos or so are all pictures of her camp, her sleeping. And then she flips to the last photo, timestamp 5.30 a.m. It's her car. At that point, she drops the camera, turns the ignition, and drives away as fast as she can. And she hasn't been camping alone since. Spooky, spooky. Whether this happened, I don't know. If it did happen, that's terrifying. Honestly, I think, to me, not being alone in the woods, like being alone in the woods is not what is scary. It's thinking you're alone and not being alone in the woods. 100%. Oh, my God. Oh, frick, dude. This is exactly like this. Jeez, you can't just spring that on people. <laughs> They're like, what the That's hell exactly this? what I was thinking of. I actually had heard another story. I've like heard versions this, of that story. Which is why I was like, it could be an urban legend. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I've heard ones where it's like, she was backpacking and she had a a uh, disposable camera. I've heard that one too. And then when she finally got them developed, the last three are just her sleeping in her tent, which is like, dude, no, no. Do you know what's crazy? Huh? I got a story from a listener. It's a lot like that one. I was going to share it tonight. I don't think I will. Cause I'm trying to verify one thing about it. Oh shit. Cause it involves Bluetooth. Oh really? Hmm. Do, can you Bluetooth someone? Can you airdrop something? If you're not, if oh, you're like, Bluetooth? Well, like, can you airdrop something if we were both out without service? If you had your airdrop on, yeah. Because remember when we were in New Zealand, we were able to airdrop things to people, even though we weren't on Wi-Fi? Okay. Then that was my, I was like, I need to verify this before I share the story. Hmm. Because if that's not real, then this isn't real. I don't know if this is, but like the popular urban legends thing kind of got me and I went down a rabbit hole (laughs) after watching the movie. (laughs) That's, That's classic. This, like that picture, I feel like... If you're into creepy pasta and and all of that, like internet lore and urban legends, I feel like everybody remembers seeing this picture at one point. Yeah. If you're in that loop. And I remember being like way Dis- uh, disturbed. Disturbed oh, by, by the story. Got it got me. me. Yeah. It's uh very much like uh like even though t- hearing that story now like doesn't affect me as much as it did then. Like it was very much like the introduction to a lot of these things. Oh yeah. And like initially when everyone was like coming out with this, it was like, holy shit, this is terrifying. (sighs) Yeah. The scariest part is what that guy actually looks like, bro. Oh, for sure. I I think it, yeah. The lady thought it was an old woman in the photo. 
dude. It looks like Pinocchio to me. Or like dead it looks silence. like Slappy the Clown. Yeah, definitely. Anyways, that's it for me tonight. Right? I love hearing classic urban legends. They're classic for a reason. And those two were classic. I thought they were very fun trying to find them and trying to verify them. Yeah. Even though I couldn't, it sent me down a rabbit hole. Yeah. If anyone has links, jump in our discord and send. If you have any like info on anything we talk about on the pod. If you have any urban legends too, send those over. Cause we love reading those and like, we'll share them if, if like we haven't already. Uh, is that you tonight? Yep. Hell yeah, Sean. Thank you. All right. Anything else from people's in the chat? Say a lot of Mormon talking. Someone's teaching us about airdrop. <laughs> so that's, uh, Did they say that was correct? I thought it was. Um, they said, what about like the recent government uh, disclosures? I don't know. I don't know enough. I haven't looked into them yet. Is it just like the Pentagon saying that yeah, they finally... like the declassified Dude. documents. Like those were cool, but there's not a lot to be farmed I don't know. That. It's this like, this might it. be really upsetting, but the fact that they're being like, yep, aliens are real. Now I'm like, aliens are not real. <laughs> Which I is like, I, if, and if you hear that and you're really upset and annoyed, you have every right to be. But also I'm kind of with you because generally speaking, I will believe the opposite <laughs> of what I'm told. By like the narrative that's being pushed. Yes. Yeah, me too. Which is probably not a good headspace to be in, but that's alas, that's where I'm at. It's because I have trust issues. I think alien stories, ultimately, when you look at it from a story per- perspective, uh, like the period comes really early. It's like we saw the strange object in the sky and that's it. Yeah. You know? So, and then you have stories where people talk about like being abducted and, uh, I don't know why those, at least for me personally, are harder to take in than uh, any other story. 